Hello, my name is Carrie Brown and I'm with the Central Mississippi Regional Library System. Today I'm going to be reading to you chapters 1 and 2 of Calendar Mysteries, March Mischief, written by Ron Roy, illustrated by John Stephen Gurney, and published by Random House, New York. Chapter 1. A Leprechaun Named Pal Batman! shouted Nate. A pirate! yelled Brian. Groucho! cried Lucy. It was Friday, March 15th. In two days, it would be St. Patrick's Day. Every year, people in Greenlawn had a St. Patrick's Day contest. They dressed leprechaun statues in funny outfits. The mayor chose a winner, and there was a prize. Everyone who entered the contest bought a leprechaun statue for $5. The money went to help a local food bank. The four kids had chipped in and bought their statue together. They were on Bradley and Brian's front porch with a cardboard box of costumes. The kids were trying costumes on the leprechaun and on themselves. Lucy was in first grade with the three boys. She was staying with her cousin, Dink Duncan, for a year. Her parents were in Arizona helping to build a school on a reservation. Nate Hathaway and his big sister Ruth Rose lived next door to Dink on Woody Street. Bradley and Brian Pinto were twins and lived with their parents and older brother Josh on Farm Lane. Pal, the Pinto's dog, sniffed the green leprechaun statue. It stood about two feet tall. The statue looked like a little green man with a bow tie. Its face had plump green cheeks and a green beard. Green buckled shoes were on its feet. Pal licked the leprechaun's face. Hey, that gives me another idea, Bradley said. Why don't we dress the statue as Pal? Huh? Nate said. A leprechaun dog? Sure, why not? Bradley asked. Everyone else will make theirs some sports hero or comic book guy. We'd be the only ones with a dog. Can we do that? Brian asked. Why not? Bradley asked. The mayor's rules didn't say it had to be human. That's a great idea, Lucy said. We can make floppy ears, a tail, and a doggy nose, and we can name it Pal. Bradley pulled off the hat he'd been trying on and ran inside. A minute later, he came back with a box of art supplies. Bradley took out scissors, glue, clay, markers, and construction paper. The kids spent the rest of the afternoon changing the leprechaun into a basset hound. Lucy made floppy ears. They looked just like Pal's ears. Nate molded some brown clay into a nose. Brian used a tube sock for the tail. He made brown marks on it like the ones on Pal's tail. It doesn't look like a dog, Brian said. He needs fur. I have an idea, Bradley said. He went in the kitchen to Pal's bed. Pal liked to sleep on one of Bradley's old brown sweaters. Bradley grabbed the sweater and took it outside. What are you doing? Brian asked. You'll see, Bradley said. He cut the sweater sleeves off, then he pulled it over the leprechaun's head. The sweater made the leprechaun look furry, sort of. He looks good, Lucy said. He smells bad, Brian said. Bradley put his nose next to the leprechaun. It's the sweater, he said. Well, if the mayor picks the smelliest statue, we should win, Nate said. Pal barked at the leprechaun. He rubbed his nose against the sweater, then he curled up near its green feet and went to sleep. Chapter 2 Lost Leprechaun Bradley woke up thirsty the next morning. He knew there was a carton of orange juice in the fridge. His stomach growled. Maybe he'd find donuts in the kitchen, too. He looked over at his brother's bread. Brian was sound asleep. Bradley slipped out of the room. He tiptoed down the hallway and stairs so he wouldn't wake his family. The kitchen clock said 7.30. The sun was starting to shine through the window over the sink. Bradley smiled. He didn't see any donuts, but he poured himself a glass of juice. He drank it and listened to a few birds outside the window. Then he remembered the leprechaun statue on the porch. He wanted to check it out again before the contest the next day. Bradley opened the front door. He stepped onto the porch in his bare feet. Then he gasped. The leprechaun was gone! Bradley turned and ran back inside the house. He bumped into Josh in his pajamas. Whoa, slow down. What's the matter? 
Josh said. The leprechaun is gone, Bradley shouted just as his parents came into the kitchen. What's wrong? his mother asked. Why the shouting? The leprechaun ran away from home, Josh said, cracking a grin. Bradley raced upstairs to his room. Get up, Brian, he shouted. He yanked off his pajamas and started getting dressed. What's all the yelling? Brian asked. One of his eyes peeked out from under the bed covers. The leprechaun is gone, Bradley said. Brian sat up. His hair was all spiky. What do you mean? he asked. Bry, it's not on the porch where we left it, Bradley said. Someone must have stolen it. Brian yawned. Who'd want a smelly old leprechaun, he asked. Bradley tossed a pillow at his brother. I want it, he said. Brian ducked from the pillow. What are you going to do, he asked. Look for it, Bradley said. He pulled on his sneakers, and you're going to help. Two minutes later, Bradley and Brian were in the backyard. Brad, if someone stole it, why are we searching our own yard, Brian asked. Bradley peered inside a clump of bushes. Maybe someone hid it out here to play a trick on us. The brothers looked under shrubs, in the barn, and even up in trees. Their mother opened the back door. You boys come in and eat some breakfast, she yelled. Bradley and Brian walked back into the kitchen. Before sitting down at the table, Bradley called Lucy. Someone stole the leprechaun, he told her. Call Nate and come over. Maybe someone just took it for a joke, the boy's mother said after Bradley hung up. She looked at Josh. Don't look at me, he said. It's probably your buddy Nate. He loves playing jokes on people. Bradley thought about Nate. Would he steal the leprechaun they had all worked on so hard? While they were eating oatmeal, the phone rang. Josh jumped for it. Hello, he said. Just a minute. Josh placed the phone next to Bradley's orange juice. For you, he said. Someone with a bad cold. Bradley picked up the phone and said, hello. Lucky O'Leary stole your leprechaun, a hoarse voice said. Then the caller hung up. Thank you. Be sure to tune in next week for chapters three and four. Goodbye.